China is going nuclear. Beijing is doubling down on nuclear energy development in an effort to pump up power in the South China Sea. China recently announced plans to build a floating nuclear power plant over the next five years. Some 20 floating stations are expected to be built among the numerous islands it lays claim to in the South China Sea. Currently, power in the Spratleys and Paracels is produced by diesel generators, which are neither efficient nor environmentally friendly. With a floating nuclear platform, China hopes to provide a stable source of power to residents and troops based on the disputed islands. China also aims to promote offshore gas and oil extraction in the area. Floating power stations are believed to be less prone to natural disasters. Emergencies like a melting core could be prevented by simply pumping in cooling seawater. Developing nuclear power will also help cut down carbon dioxide and pollutant emissions. Ultimately, China wants its nuclear power capacity to reach 58 million kilowatts by 2020. Research on the core technologies has already been carried out. Chinese ally Russia is developing a similar facility for Arctic waters, and China is seeking cooperation to speed up their plans. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. Keep watching to see what else China is building. China to build nuclear reactor in UK after Hinkley deal approved. China's investment in the approved Hinkley Point nuclear power station project may mean it could build its own nuclear reactor in the UK. China is hoping to build its Hualong-1 reactor in Bradwell, Essex. Hualong-1 is a third-generation pressurized water reactor, which is designed to last 60 years. A typical pressurized water reactor contains uranium-235. When the isotope's atoms are split, the energy released boils water and creates steam, which then helps rotate turbine blades to generate electricity. The reactor building is protected by two layers of walls. The inner wall contains a steel lining, while the outer wall is designed to be strong enough to withstand the impact of a large commercial plane crash. China aims to export its nuclear reactors worldwide by selling its Hualong-1 reactor in Pakistan, Argentina, and Romania. China plans super city of 130 million people around Beijing. The Chinese government is embarking on an ambitious project to make Beijing the center of a super metropolis that would house 130 million people. The megalopolis would be spread over 82,000 square miles, about six times the size of New York City but with a population larger than a third of the United States. The new plan will link Beijing to Hebei province and the economic area around Tianjin, with China's capital moving part of its bureaucracy, factories and hospitals to the hinterland. A subway and better light rail system are planned to open in the next three to five years, and a new bridge across the Chaobai River to Beijing is under construction. With this new super city, Beijing will become the focus for culture and technology, Tianjin a research base for manufacturing, with Hebei more likely to focus on minor industries such as textiles. The plan is aimed at revamping northern China's economy by offering services that are now lacking in the hinterland, such as bus terminals, schools, cinemas and parks. The entire project also implies a reconsideration of how taxes are collected and distributed, which would include instituting property taxes and allowing local governments to keep them. Rain or shine, future solar panels may be able to generate power. Scientists in China are producing solar panels that can produce energy from the last source you'd expect when we're talking about solar energy, rainwater. In a typical solar panel, photons from a light source knock electrons free from atoms within the panel, and the action generates a flow of electricity. Although solar power technology has been getting increasingly efficient, there's still the tiny problem that solar cells can't produce any power when it's raining. Researchers are introducing a new type of solar panel by adding a layer of graphene or carbon atoms arranged in a honeycomb structure to dye sensitized solar cells. A flexible layer of indium-10 oxide and plastic is included underneath. Graphene has unusual properties that allow electrons to move freely throughout the entire layer. Rainwater contains positively charged ions like ammonium, calcium, and sodium. When water binds to the panel surface, a double layer of positive ions and negatively charged electrons is created, which ends up producing a voltage and current. 
Tests of the new solar panels have been able to produce hundreds of microvolts, which is small even compared to a standard AA battery. So there's a long way to go before the new solar panels become more widely used, but more efficient future versions could mean big things for the solar industry. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. Ventilation corridors may be China's solution to heavy smog. China's capital city is planning to construct ventilation corridors in a bid to tackle the country's air pollution. Densely populated cities tend to generate more energy and waste heat, resulting in a warmer environment than surrounding rural areas. Measures to curb pollution in Beijing have led to air quality improving only marginally. In 2015, the city had 186 days of up-to-par air quality, up 14 from 2014. To reduce smog, the capital is planning to build ventilation corridors. These are designed to relieve a city's heat and pollution by improving urban wind flow. The corridors will be created by connecting parks, rivers, lakes, highways, and small building blocks. Five primary corridors, over 500 meters wide, will run from the northern suburbs to the south. Secondary corridors measuring more than 80 meters are also planned. The corridors will reportedly allow northern winds to blow through Beijing during severe winter smog spells. Experts also suggest curbing the amount and height of city center buildings, as well as adding more green spaces. Beijing saw its worst smog spell from November to December of 2015. The air pollution was so thick it blocked views and prompted authorities to issue a red alert warning. China building new military base near disputed islands. China is building a large military base on islands it controls near the disputed Senkaku Island. The base is being constructed in the Nanchi Islands off the coast of China's Zhejiang province, about 300 kilometers northwest of the Japanese-controlled Senkaku Islands, which China claims and calls the Diaoyu. Several large radar installations have already been built at high points on the main Nanji Island. Landing strips have been paved, most likely for aircraft operating from warships or patrol vessels. More landing strips are scheduled to be built on an island near the main island in 2015. China's new base is aimed at strengthening surveillance over its self-proclaimed air defense identification zone, which covers a portion of what Japan considers its own territory in the East China Sea, and to enhance China's ability to respond militarily to threats in the region. Japan is also building a surveillance center on Yanaguni Island to monitor activity around the Senkakus, which are administered by Tokyo, but claimed by China and Taiwan.